welcome. Uh, my name is Mike Aller. I'm the executive director of the Space Coast Energy Consortium. And uh, thanks very much for coming to our, uh, op our workshop on funding opportunities today. We really appreciate everybody uh, coming and, and showing up. Um, uh, it's been, uh, it's, been uh, uh, it's a busy time. It's a busy time of year. Everyone is traveling and there's a lot of meetings going on. And we really appreciate you taking the time to be here today and uh, sit with us and, and uh, uh, hopefully together strategize a little bit about some of the opportunities that are out there. Uh, we wanted to use this opportunity to essentially you know, give you a little bit of information about uh, the, the effort to bring energy related um, industry here to Florida, uh, develop what we have here, and then uh, provide some in information insight about some funding opportunities that are out there uh, for all of us to be able to take advantage of. And then uh, talk a little bit about a, a couple of, of major initiatives that are coming up uh, through the, the federal government uh, in advanced manufacturing in particular. And we have Dr. Ilya Mingarev here, Rev here, who will be talking uh, about a uh, opportunity in additive manufacturing that the University of Central Florida is working on, uh, as well as a number of other uh, uh, partners in, in the community. Uh, there are several other opportunities that we'll be talking about as well. And then hopefully we're, we're going to have some um, uh, good uh, collaborative conversation about how we can all together uh, put together some, some efforts to, uh, to uh, build, build coalitions and, and bring home some of these opportunities for all of us. So thank you very, very much for being here today again. And um, uh, I look forward to a, a good and, and a productive conversation and, and an interactive conversation. Uh, I know the room is set up to be kind of a lecture hall, but we're really hoping to have, you know, a, a kind of collaborative conversation about you know, some of these initiatives, some of the things that are that are out there, and how we can uh, go out and, and make this happen here in our community. And finally, I do want to say that we are going to be uh, um, uh, videotaping at least the presentation portion of, of this. Uh, a program so that you know this will be available uh, for others who weren't able to be here today and for you potentially to go back and, and reference uh, in the future we also uh, are going to be kind of putting several of the links to the information that we're going to be sharing with you today online uh, so that it will be freely available and we're passing around a sign-up sheet so all of you who are here will get an email also with a direct link to that information so that you can share that with uh, whoever, you need, uh, whoever you need to. So without further ado, I do, we just want to do some, a welcome and some introductions, then uh, highlight a couple of our advanced manufacturing opportunities that we have in the area uh, um, uh, that are being developed and that are, are coming down from the federal government, uh, highlight some of the other funding opportunities that are out there currently. This is really, it's, it's prime time for federal funding opportunities. This, uh, this time of year, especially with the way that the budget cycle is developed this year, so there's a lot that's out there. And we'll be highlighting just sort of a very uh, high-level overview of, of some of the things that are out there. There's a lot more that you can dive into and, and hopefully will. Uh, then we want to you know, use this as a workshop. It's not just you know, us giving information over. We want to be you know, collaboratively working with you on you know, what are some opportunities, what are some people that you're aware of, or some, uh, some organizations that might be able to, to team to take advantage of some of these opportunities. And then, you know, what are the next steps? What can we do in the next uh, couple weeks, 30, 60 days to really, you know, move forward on some of these opportunities, especially since some of them may be coming up uh, quite quickly or are open now. So first of all, I want to say uh, thank you very much to uh, all of our consortium staff uh, for putting together all of this uh, for you. There's a lot of information that we'll be going through today. And we have a, a number of folks, uh, Roger, uh, our operations director, Tim Franta, uh, who's with us uh, working on our Space to Energy Center, uh, Michael Smith in the back, who works with us on energy efficiency, uh, David Mandernack, who's here, who works on our uh, Space to Energy Regional Innovation Center. We have uh, se uh, several of our uh, board, oh, and, and uh, Mark Robinson, who does a lot of work for us on asset mapping and kind of pulling together information on who's out there, what they're doing, and how everybody fits together. Uh, we also have a couple of our board members here. We have uh, uh, John Porter, who's our board chairman, and uh, Bennett Boucher, who's also here. 
And um, uh, we also have uh, Scott Lewitt is supposed to be showing up, so hopefully he'll be here soon. Um, and we also want to say thank you to the Florida Solar Energy Center for very graciously hosting us on uh, relatively short notice, uh, um, and also to uh, uh, Dr. Mingrev and uh, the U UCF uh, Center for Research in Optics and Lasers uh, for their presentation, which he'll be giving shortly on, on that opportunity. So um, without further ado, we want to talk about a couple things. First of all, you know, clean energy is a real opportunity. We feel that energy overall, it's a huge market. There's a lot of opportunity there, and there's a lot of opportunity here as we transition from you know, our aerospace base, you know, there's some transition in the, d in the defense contracting business, and energy is an area that needs a lot of technology, has a lot of potential. And so our consortium has been working uh, under the auspices of, uh, uh, you know, first, you know, as a, as an, as a collaborative uh, uh, community effort, and, and with funding through uh, uh, some degree through the state, some degree through uh, the federal government under a uh, economic development administration grant to do cluster development to basically build a network of enterprises here in central Florida that are working on energy to help to catalyze some of the things that are going on between our space and aerospace business, defense business, and potential linkages to the energy industry. With a specific uh, focus on you know, these keystone technologies, you know, we, we really have kind of done some strategic thinking and thought you know, really there's a, a couple of areas that you know really have are the next generation of technology and we need to be focusing if we really want to be effective as a as a region as a state as a nation as a community overall to be focusing on those types of, of areas and we'll be talking a little bit about you know what those are and how we want to do that but the, a big part of that is identifying you know funding opportunities and going after things in specific areas so in terms of our, our energy cluster, we've been working to you know, identify who's out there, what's going on, uh, trying to put some connections together. Uh, we'll be uh, rolling out a new website here in a couple of months that'll be done a very good interactive resource to, to connect people. And then uh, you know, provide some specific linkages and specific focus on how we address the aerospace and defense transition toward uh, energy, taking advantage of some of those opportunities. And here's Scott. Go ahead, go ahead right, in, right in front there. So in terms of our, our uh, kind of primary funding for this, which is called the Clean Energy Jobs Accelerator, it's a uh, region of East Central Florida, basically inclusive of Orlando, Daytona, and Melbourne area. Uh, you know, uh, so East Central, East Central Florida Regional Planning Council and we've already done some initial assessment of you know, some of the energy businesses, some of the uh, other technology areas here in the region overall. As we showed in the, in the previous slide, we've done a, a, a good deep dive in Brevard, but we've also done a, a, a dive into uh, you know, the region overall. And there's a lot of capability here. There are a lot of different companies in a lot of different areas, and there's a lot of opportunity. But going back to these keystone technologies, and this is something actually that is very much linked into some of the administration and, and the funding priorities as well, is focusing on, yeah, everyone wants to talk about energy, everybody wants to talk about, well, what is exactly does that mean? We talk about you know, generation, transmission, and use, which are the kind of the major areas of, of the energy business. Um, but, and most of the uh, attention usually is on this sort of product level, which is either electric vehicles, it's hydrogen, it's photovoltaics, um, but actually underneath that set of, of products uh, are a set of sort of keystone or enabling technologies that help support the, the development of the next generation of all those products, as well as the next generation of all those products that support the aerospace business or support the defense business or support the medical industry. And so many of these are you know, 3D printed electronics, simulation, cryogenics, nanotechnology, uh, these are things that we have a lot of capability here in Central Florida. We also have uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know, different companies doing different things. And there's, quite frankly, a lot of money out there to help support this. And so we want to you know, really, in this workshop and in some of the other activities that we're doing, highlight where those, uh, where those uh, opportunities are and help drive some, op some, some activity in those opportunities. 
So to begin with, there's a very major opportunity in advanced manufacturing. This is a major uh, administration priority. Uh, there's a, a kind of national uh, initiative for advanced manufacturing, which has been going on for about a year, year and a half now. Uh, there was a major uh, kind of presidential report called the PCAST report, uh, which included the president of MIT and a couple of other you know, very high level luminaries talking about how we need to really be advancing the, the state of the art in these advanced technology areas, advanced manufacturing technology areas. And so there is a very large uh, initiative the uh, uh, administration has asked for as much as a billion dollars to support this in future years. Uh, but in the near term, they are also steering funding, current funding towards specific opportunities in this area. And there are a couple of big ones that are coming out Soon. Uh, the first is, a, is called a Pilot Institute for Additive Manufacturing, uh, it's specifically focused on 3D printing, additive manufacturing. There's a lot of different kind of terms for a similar kind of suite of capabilities. And it's primarily focused out of the Department of Defense. There are several other agencies that are supporting this in a major role. But the size of the opportunity, it's a $50 million opportunity. So it's the same size about as, that, as the Semitech a photovoltaic deal that we tried for a, a, a few months ago, a few couple years ago, if you remember. Uh, but it's a, of that size and it's over. They're looking for $50 million, give or take. I mean, it's $50 million plus some, some very substantial local match. Um, likewise, there's another advanced manufacturing demonstration facility, uh, which is a separate, uh, um, well, first, before I go to that, I should say that there's a current proposal being put together uh, by the, the UCF uh, Center for Research in Optics and Lasers, which Dr. Mingri will talk about in a moment. So we'll, I'll let him kind of, kind of give the rest of that story. There's a lot of things going on in that area. There are a lot of companies who are already involved, and we'd like to sort of get even more of our companies and our folks involved in that effort going forward. So the, that's a big part of this. This is uh, you know, coming out very, very soon, uh, in the next couple weeks. Um, the second is this advanced manufacturing demonstration facility, which is led by the Department of Energy. This is again uh, uh, supposed to be, we hear, on roughly the same scale. Uh, it's actually a separate uh, uh, funding opportunity than the, than the first, although they are both in the same sort of general area. And the, the manufacturing demonstration facility has kind of a broader range of, of um, uh, technologies that are or technology areas that they're considering to, to be funded in, in this initial pilot. Uh, and we're, we're looking at, at you know, this opportunity again as, an, as another opportunity. We're looking for, and uh, specifically asking for input on you know, what would be some good uh, technologies, what are some good applications from folks within the room, within the area uh, for you know, this type of, of um, uh, opportunity and, and we're hoping to help, you know, with all of you convene a process to I identify some, some sort of leading candidates for, for, for that opportunity or opportunities like it. And the good thing about these is that uh, both of these are funded in the current year. Both of them will be awarded, are supposed to be awarded by September 30th. So this is, you know, within the next six months. Uh, and, you know, both are going to subs require a substantial match because uh, you know, it's substantial federal funding and they're looking for probably, you know, 50-50 match in, in most cases. 